Hello everyone, I hope you're alright. Um, today I want to talk to you a little bit about all the books I've received for my birthday, but also all the books I've received during these past months, because I've realized that I actually never filmed a video about all the gifts that I've been given for for my birthday which is in august and because all the people i know are actually doing the last book haul of the year this incredible busy weird year it's, it's complex and complicated so i've decided to do a little bit of a comeback to the channel talking to you about all the bookish stuff that i've been given or that i bought in the past months from probably August up to now, despite being December. So let's start. If you don't know me, hi, my name is Clara and I'm the owner of this channel. I hope you enjoy this video and you know, if you like it, you just give it a thumbs up and also you can subscribe and see more stuff that I'm working on. Now I see you in, in a bit, but before I go, don't forget to follow me in all the social media that I leave down below, okay? Okay, let's start now. We are going to do this chronologically, okay? On the day of my birthday, I was lucky enough that my mother actually remembered that I am enjoying very much Edin Morgenstein writing. Now, for those who don't know me, this year my first kind of survival audiobook that I listened to during the pandemic when I was working from home, isolated and with my relatives, with the ones that I live, um, I was very, very depressed in some cases. I was, I wouldn't say depressed because I know that's a clinically evaluation that I am not in, in place to actually do so i will say i was very sad very discouraged with the situation in general and also with my personal situation regarding my work so i decided to as always turn to books i listened to the uh, starless sea which is the second book of every morgan's then um i had never read in uh, any morgan's turn books. I knew about The Night Circus, which is this book I have here, but I haven't had it with me because if you don't know, hi, I'm Spanish and we didn't have The Night Circus available for a really long time up until now. So what I did was to enjoy The Starless Sea through my English, li English library, sorry, in audiobook format, which I adored and I remember like going to my mom and saying if this book is published in Spanish I will get it and if this author is published again in Spanish I want to read everything she writes. Luckily enough uh, Umbriel Editores who is well the publishing um, company called Umbriel decided to republish The Night Circus and also The Starless Sea I couldn't actually buy the Starless Sea by the time it was published and because I actually remembered a lot of the things from the book already I decided to wait and buy the first one because it's the only one that I haven't read yet and mom said okay you adore this person and we we just know that it's going to be republished so when that happens I will buy it for your like birthday and she actually did it. We went to a bookshop and she picked it for me and she actually asked me, is this the, the C writer that you told me about in, in March? And it was like, yeah, it is. So I have it here with me. I know that it's supposed to be like the original cover, which I'm very happy. I love this kind of a striped spine and I don't know, I really want to read this book. I'm very, very, very hyped for this. 
I, as I said before, I adore the Starless Sea and I also want to have the Starless Sea on my collection but I really wanted to have this first book um, and, and enjoy it for myself in, in printed copy It's funny because I don't know like anything about this and I think it's a very nice thing to do um, I did the same with the Starless Sea and actually uh, enjoyed it very much so I'm ignoring all the information that pops up about the Night Circus and I'm enjoying it or I want to enjoy it blindly apart from this one um, my parents actually um, gave me a very very interesting um, present this year because we couldn't actually gather with some family like a standard family um, and the limitations of movement were very very specific they decided to give me an experience so they give me tickets to see we went the three of us my parents and i we went to see an exhibition of uh, about the myth of the vampire uh, that was set in a cultural space here in in madrid in spain which is where we live and uh, we did it with all the precautions, we did it with masks and sanitizers and everything so we were like in a very very small group of people, like 10 people uh, top and it, it was a, a very huge space so it was very, we had room to move around and uh, this exhibition as I said, it was about vampirism and not only about vampirism in film or in books but about the myth itself so in this uh, exhibition you went from the original myth to um, the penny dreadful uh, papers and also the uh, of course the um, Bram Stoker um, Dracula as well actually uh, I actually could see the manuscript of Dracula with the um, kind of cover written by uh, Bram Stoker as well as the first two chapters written in Bram Stoker handwriting it was actually a red ink um, that he used and I was very moved I love Dracula as a, a film but also as a book and then the exhibition moved on to other kind of vampires that were maybe early earlier than Bram Stoker one but also posterior to him and then the film industry vision of the vampire expo was exposed from Nosferatu to the um, Francis Ford Coppola version of Dracula as well as all other kind of vampires developed in the cinematic history and I adore it. I actually was able to see the Gary Oldman red kind of robe as well as one of Winona's Ryder's dresses for the Dracula film directed by Francis Ford Coppola as well as uh, some clothing from Interview with a Vampire and other kind of films related to vampirism well, because I went to that exhibition, let me just switch this off Because I went to that exhibition, my mom actually saw this on the shop In the shop of the exhibition and I fell in love with it I already have a copy of Dracula by Bram Stoker But this is a new edition, a Spanish edition, published by uh, Alfaguara, if I'm not wrong Alfaguara, yes, and it's completely illustrated in this fashion So Let me show you Because it's not only the front cover It's not only the front cover, but look at the intent papers Look at that But the interior of the book is actually like this and I adore it. It is the whole thing is like that. And it has a very very 
um, um, kind of extended uh, introduction about the myth and about the way it has been adapted to movies. Okay, now jumping into other bookish stuff that my relatives have gave me. Apart from my parents, my brother and his family are actually the best, so they know all the books that I want and since when I want them. So they decided to give me this beautiful 10th anniversary edition of The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. I haven't read any Scott Lynch book yet, but I know this book because my former flatmate and one of my best friends, Nick, from when I used to live in the UK, actually told me that she, she really enjoyed his book in particular and I saw this edition and I had to actually buy it. It's one of my treasures at the moment, although I haven't been able to actually pick it up yet. Alongside this, they gave me... Hold on a minute. They gave me this beautiful Spanish edition of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which now makes my second Taylor Jenkins Reid novel in the book, in the bookshelf. Um, this is the first one that actually make it big for Taylor Jenkins Reid, for what I know. And then Daisy Jones and the Six follow this one. I really want to do it chrono chronologically because these are the two first books of, of this author that actually hit the Spanish shelves. So I will start with The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and then I will jump into the um, Daisy Jones and the Six, a Spanish edition as well. They give me this alongside a beautiful handmade cardboard print of the TARDIS. I'm a Doctor Who fan, I'm a huge Doctor Who fan, although it's been a while since I actually, since I actually had time to sit down and watch the show. I'm still on the David Tennant era, so I'm very, very far behind. Uh, my, fa my brother, sorry, my brother actually knows it and he's very into paint painting and drawing and stuff. So he created this kind of beautiful art print with the um, psychodel psychodelical background and the uh, and the uh, tardis on the on the kind of uh, front of of that background. Apart from this, my aunt gave me this: uh, the Invisible Life of Adi Laru. This is actually a refund from another person that she gave me and I had the money to select which book I wanted to buy and I decided to go with my most anticipated release of the whole year which I'm reading at the moment as you can see. This is um, the story of Adila Ru, a girl who made, uh, makes a deal with kind of a dark god to be able to live forever and she does it and she gets what she wants but what she doesn't know at least at the beginning is that this god that she makes the she made the deal with the, um, managed to actually make it a little bit difficult for her to sustain through life because she is not going to be remembered by anyone she meets or at least that's the kind of constant in her life until she meets a boy named Henry and I'm almost finished with it I'm enjoying it very very much and I hope that by the time you see this I have already finished with it apart from this I have beautiful friends that love me very very much and uh, one of them is actually Andrea a colleague from a master's that I did back five, day, five years ago I think she uh, actually knows what I what I want she knows my Amazon wishlist very well I leave you the Amazon wishlist down below and she decided to indulge me a little bit and gave me poetry in this beautiful uh, design this is the Goblin um, Market and other poems by Christina Rossetti I've been meaning to read any uh, some Christina Rossetti poetry since four 
years ago when I following an author that I really like and this author recommended uh, in, in a thread, in a Twitter thread, she recommended um, books written by female authors in the uh, International Female Authors Day um, and she, you know, she touched very different genres and tried to make more visible authors that we probably don't know a lot about and in poetry, when it came to poetry, she recommended this one because Christina Rossetti was the uh, sister of a very famous painter, I believe, that actually made it very hard for her to shine in the cultural sphere. And I was meaning to read this poem, or at least the, the, only, po the only poem that I knew of her, Goblin Mac for years and she reminded me that I needed this book in, in particular and Andrea very kindly actually bought, bought it for me and she wasn't very sure if I wanted it and it was like poetry and I love these editions and it's a hardback edition but the the cover design it's great I have several cover designs by this illustrator and I adore it Apart from Andrea, who kindly gave me a bit of poetry, um, I received as well this chunk, which is um, which is um, La Música de los Prodigios by Costa Alcalá. This is a Spanish fantasy book written by two authors, uh, Fernando Alcalá and Georgia Costa. And this is a uh, old-fashioned fantasy story about what would have happened in the colonialism movement if or at least it's what's happened in this version when the people who are going to colonialize america discover that america still still holds magic and magical creatures good and bad in them and I, I want to know what it's about. In this version, magic is called prodigies instead of proper magical abilities. And I don't know a lot more about that other than an expedition to the, you know, American continent and they have to face all these things that they don't understand and all these creatures that they actually haven't heard about, good and bad. And I don't know, I really want to read it. I love Costa Alcala. They wrote a retelling of Little Women. They wrote a trilogy about a steampunk institute for people with magical abilities. I don't know, I, I really enjoy it. They are really good at the craft. So I have them with me. Talking about presents that aren't actually books, but they are related to books. My former flatmate, Nick, who I just mentioned in this video, sent me from the UK, apart from a bag full of tea and different kind of tea, she sent me this beautiful hardback notebook and she made for me, and this is very special, she made for me these pen holders that is attached to, well, in this notebook is attached at the moment, but you can adjust it any notebook of this kind of size and this is very important to me because as someone with a disability it's very hard to it's always very hard to carry these tiny utensils such as pens and pencils and stuff like that so this is a way of not losing track of them as well as having them close to the material that you need them for and i just love it so i wanted to make sure it was shown here Okay, the last things that I have to show you are, well, this is my own present for myself for my birthday, which is Fuego Bajo Las Nubes by Aitiane Rodriguez, uh, which is, who is an author that I really like. And this is a story about what would have happened if during the suffragette movement, the women had any connect or some connection to magic and i am holding two things because i helped to uh, produce this book 
I bought this book before it was actually released and because of that I was given well I don't know if you can see it let me just I was given this notebook that is actually a, for a, a theme notebook related to the book alongside the original kind of um, bookmark and this is a white notebook that follows the aesthetic of the time period and the book but I really wanted to show it to you um, apart from that these are all my presents for my birthday but apart from that I bought for myself a few months later I bought for myself this um, poetry collection called Petas en la Tierra this is um, a poetry collection written by all the women that were part of the famous generation of the 27 and this generation of the 27 um, it's very famous in Spain because it's uh, you know where a lot of people important people not only in the kind of writing department but also in the arts were um, were all friends and they were all producing great art Federico García Lorca was part of this generation Dali was part of this generation uh, Miguel Hernández I think is, was also part of this generation Luis Cernuda was also part of this generation all poets and writers and 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 painters however as you can tell all the names that i just mentioned were not filming fem females for a really long time for a really long time in my uh study career academic career uh in in uh, high school and and when i had to study that uh, literature in journalism that period of time i thought that this generation was only and solely formed by males that's not right they were poets among them they were artists among them and these female artists these female poets were more in the shadows apparently according to history so this collection of poems is only formed by female members of this generation so normally when you go to a bookshop in spain and you ask for um, poetry collections of this generation you will find all male authors all male authors who are really famous and they are famous for a reason but they you don't normally find a mix of female and male authors or if you find a, a mix a collection it, male are going to be more predominant however this book uh, is only about the female poets that were co-writing or that were coexisting within this generation with other male authors that apparently made it to fame more than they did so this is a kind of a, a test a, a, a actual proof that they were that these female authors were part of this inf kind of important generation in spanish literature so these are my uh, girls of the generation of the 27 so I'm very happy to have it here because apparently it's very hard to find. Apart from this, apart from all these books, lately I've been into candles and I'm going to move a little bit so you can actually see. I bought this Jaina candle, which is handmade soy, soy candle, sorry, made by the Spanish company Book and Glow. And this candle in particular mm, it smells of fresh air I think vanilla and some kind of citric citric probably oranges or something like that 
this is supposed to be smelling like the kind of gardening area of Thornfield of this kind of house estate that is very very important in Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre is one of my favorite characters in literature. It's one of my favorite books in literature in fact. So this is the first um, candle that I bought, bought, that I buy for them. Uh, they create all these bookish related candles. But I know even though it's, this is only the first one, I know it's not going to be the last one that I buy for them. It's very big and they are they bring it here in these jars, these crystal jars that you can actually clean after the candle is over and reuse for storing stuff. So this is probably the candle that I'm going to burn after filming this, after editing this, when I sit down and actually read more of Adi Larue. I love this candle. I know that I you can actually buy them online and they can my my uh kind of um i don't remember the name of this my tag here they the the name is old in spanish but you can actually buy them in english as well so you will not have any issue with buying from them i think the web page is also in, in english so you can actually buy for them from them if you want apart from the Jane candle Lately, this is not bookish related, but lately I bought this wolf. This smells really good. This fire lodge scented candle. This is basically what? Well, sorry, log log fire. This smells literally like a bonfire smell, and I love it. This is the candle that I normally use to work. I, I light it up and I concentrate better with this um, this candle lit. Uh, this smells of fi fire and wood and kind of musky um, kind of scent at the at the back. It's really really nice. Well, this is the last book haul of the year and I think this is a compendium of what I've been gathering the past few months as i told you before i have the best friends and family in the world and they actually bring me so many new things so many things that i forgot about and so many things that i really want to read so i hope you enjoyed and i hope that if you have read any of the books that i mentioned down below you give me your opinion on them see you next week bye